In this video tutorial, I am going to discuss about Rapaport Lubering Pathway and 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Remember this pathway, it was discovered by two scientists, Rapaport and Lubering and hence this name is given. Now this Rapaport Lubering Pathway, it occurs in mature red blood cells, right? And in the red blood cell, this pathway, it produces this 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate molecule. This Rapaport Lubering Pathway, it is the supplementary pathway of glycolysis. So, we have to first understand briefly the glycolysis. So, in the glycolysis, what happens? That glucose initially by the multiple reaction, it gets converted to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. This fructose 1,6-bisphosphate undergoes splitting into two half. One is dihydroxy aceton phosphate that is DHAP and second one is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This DHAP and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate both are interconvertible. Then this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, it gets converted to 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it gets converted to 3-phosphoglycerate and 3-phosphoglycerate by the multiple reaction ultimately converted to pyruvate. Now, while converting from 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate, this particular step is bypassed in rapaport lubering pathway. So, as this one step of glycolysis is being bypassed in rapaport lubering pathway, we can also call this rapaport lubering pathway as a rapaport lubering shunt pathway, right? As it is bypassing one step of glycolysis. Now, during this step, what happens? One ATP is generated, right? ADP is consumed and it is converted to ATP. This is a substrate level phosphorylation. What happens in the rapaport lubering pathway that 15 to 20 percent of this 1,3 BPG, 15 to 20 percent of this totally generated 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate, it gets converted to 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate. And here this reaction is catalyzed by the bisphosphoglycerate mutase enzyme. Right. Now, here what is happening? There is just a shifting of phosphate group from the first carbon to the second carbon and as it is coming on the second carbon, we call this molecule as a 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. This 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it hydrolyzed to this 3-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme bisphosphoglycerate phosphatase. Here what happens, one inorganic phosphate is released and as it is a hydrolysis reaction, one water molecule is added to remove this inorganic phosphate. So, as you can see that if 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it follows the pathway of this 3-phosphate, this glycolysis, one ATP is generated. But when 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it follows a pathway of rapaport lubering pathway, ATP is not generated. Right? So, we can consider that the cost of this generation of this 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate is the 1 ATP. So, we can consider that this 2,3-BPG production is little bit costly, right? And it occurs where? In the mature red blood cell. So, the next question arises that what is the need of such costly molecule in the red blood cell? But before that, I want to clarify one thing that this bisphosphoglycerate mutase and this bisphosphoglycerate phosphate is both are indeed a different enzyme activity, but actually if you look at it is a part of single protein. Suppose this is a single protein, it has two active site. On one active site, it has an activity of this bisphosphoglycerate mutase and on other active site, on the second active site, it has an activity of this bisphosphoglycerate phosphatase, right? So, this single protein is carrying out this both the enzyme activity. So, we can call it as a bifunctional enzyme, bifunctional enzyme. This thing we have to keep in mind. Now, uh, coming to this question that what is the need of this costly 2,3-BPG molecule inside this red blood cell? So, basically 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate, its main function is that it decreases the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen. Right? So, as it decreases the affinity of hemoglobin to oxygen, it can facilitate the release of oxygen at the tissue side. So, release of oxygen at tissue. Now, how this 2,3-BPG molecule is able to decrease the affinity of hemoglobin to the oxygen? So, for that, let us consider the structure of hemoglobin. 
we know that hemoglobin is a tetrameric protein that means it is a four protein chain suppose this is the first protein chain this is the second protein chain this is the third protein chain and this is the fourth protein chain it is two alpha chains and two beta globin chains right and these four protein chains are arranged in a such a way that there is a central pocket formation centrally some place or some space is vacant right and the amino acid of this beta globin chain which lines up the central pocket it is rich in the positive charge amino acid remember it is only on the beta globin chain not on the alpha chain right and this positive charge on this beta globin chain is mainly because of the histidine and lysine amino acids now this 2 3 bpg molecule itself is a negative charge why it is negative charge it is because this phosphate moiety which is present in this bpg molecule it will create a negative charge and here we have a positive charge so this is the best location for this 2 3 bpg molecule so what happens one single molecule of this 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate having a negative charge it lies into the central pocket and because of this opposite charge there is a formation of ionic bonds right we can also call it as a salt bridge so this salt bridge formation occurs in this hemoglobin molecule which ultimately lead to it decrease affinity of the hemoglobin to oxygen and ultimately rele ultimately release of oxygen at the tissue so now we know the function of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate and this is a very very important function now next question is that what is the clinical significance of this 2 3 bpg in the clinical significance we understand that the binding of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate with hemoglobin is primarily associated with the release of oxygen at the tissue site right so because of that it has a lots of clinical significance let's look at them one by one the first clinical significance is in the hypoxia see in our body there are certain condition which can lead to hypoxia for example at high altitude or in case of COPD that is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease the COPD is a standard short form okay and then in case of anemia in all these condition there is a development of hypoxia and what happens in all these condition there is a compensatorily increase in the 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate level and because this compensatory increase of 2 3 bpg level this hypoxia condition it can be better dealt with how this increased 2 3 bpg will help hemoglobin to release more oxygen at the tissue side right so patient may have a relief from the deleterious effect of this disorders the second clinical significance is in the blood transfusion now in blood transfusion what happens generally blood bank stores the blood for the longer period and such stored blood in such stored blood what happens there is a drop in the level of 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate level and when such stored blood having a low 2 3 bpg it is transfused to patient such blood will not able to deliver oxygen effectively to the tissue why because there is a low 2 3 bpg so such hemoglobin will not able to deliver oxygen to the tissue so what is the solution for that so solution is addition of inosine molecule in such stored blood why because inosine when it is added in the stored blood it help to regenerate this 2 3 bisphosphoglycerate so when such stored blood having inosine it is transfused to the patient this type of blood will be able to better deliver the oxygen to the tissue the third clinical significance is regarding fetal hemoglobin this fetal hemoglobin fetal hemoglobin it is also called as a hbf remember fetal hemoglobin it is present in the fetus or in embryo now see fetus is not dependent on the atmosphere for the extraction for the supply of oxygen why because fetal lung are not in the contact with the atmosphere rather fetus itself is lying in the amniotic fluid so fetus is dependent totally on the mother's oxygen right and in the mother there is a adult hemoglobin that we call it as a hba 
Now, if you compare the affinity of HBF and HBA towards the 2, 3 bisphosphoglycerate level, this HBF has a low affinity for 2, 3 bisphosphoglycerate level. Whereas, adult hemoglobin, it has a high affinity as compared to this fetal hemoglobin for 2, 3 BPG. So, what happens? There is a inverse relationship of oxygen's affinity in front of this 2, 3 BPG affinity, right? So, as fetal hemoglobin has a low affinity for 2, 3 BPG, they have a high auto affinity. Whereas, in adult hemoglobin, which is in the mother, there will be less affinity towards this oxygen. Now, what happens as I told you earlier that fetus is totally dependent on mother for the oxygen supply, right? Fetus cannot extract oxygen from the atmosphere. But the thing is that, that between fetal blood and maternal blood, there is a placental barrier because of the placenta. There is a placenta and because of this placenta, fetus blood cannot go to the mother side and mother's blood cannot come towards the fetal side. So, what happens? This HBF and HBA, they have a different oxygen affinity, right? So, HBF as it is a higher affinity for the oxygen, it directly extracts oxygen from this maternal blood, right? So, this differential affinity for the 2-3 BPG level, it leads to direct extraction of oxygen from the maternal blood to the fetal circulation. And so, fetus need for the oxygen is fulfilled. So, this was a third clinical significance. Now, the fourth clinical significance is regarding the glycolytic enzyme deficiencies. See, one thing is obvious that if glycolytic enzyme deficit anywhere starting from the glucose to this 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, it will lead to less production of 1,3-BPG. For example, hexokinase. Hexokinase catalyzes the first, very first reaction of the glycolysis from glucose to glucose 6-phosphate. If this enzyme is deficient, hexokinase is deficient, there will be a less supply of 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So, obviously, less production of 2,3-BPG will be there. So, there is a low level of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate. Whereas, in the opposite case, glycolytic enzyme deficient, after this 3-phosphoglycerate, it will lead to higher 2,3-BPG level. For example, pyruvate kinase deficiency pyruvate kinase deficiency. Pyruvate kinase is the last reaction of the aerobic glycolysis that converts phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate, right? In this deficiency, what will be, uh, happen? There will be a back pressure. So, it will lead to increased 2-3 BPG level. So, this thing we have to keep in mind. So, in case of glycolytic enzyme deficiency, depending on the case, depending on the location of reaction which catalyze, if before, then there is a decreased 2,3 BPG level. If it is after, then it will lead to increased 2,3 BPG level. So, that is all about rapaport lubering pathway and 2,3 bisphosphoglycerate. If you have any query or confusion, please write it down in the comment section below. Thank you.